Yeah, we've got a pretty cool person coming on very shortly, Robin Malcolm, actually. And uh, she's our favourite Westie, of course. And we loved her in Outrageous Fortune. Uh, we just, I mean, she really has been taken into the bosom of the nation, hasn't she? <laughs> Which is probably an appropriate phrase to use because Robin says she likes playing slightly grunty roles. Uh, she doesn't want to be a, a wallflower. She wants to have a bit of edge in her character. And honestly, she um, she certainly delivers in spades, doesn't she? About that, very busy at the moment with her career, just fantastic. Uh, she's, in fact, I was um, looking at uh, some pieces on her this morning when I was doing my research, and um, I had to laugh because I saw a piece and it described her as much loved American actress, Robin Malcolm. And I was like, how dare you? How very dare you? And Robin Malcolm on the line right now. Kia ora, Robin. Kia ora, how are you? Kia ora, you, and uh, I'm very well, thank you. Well, I'm getting there. I've, uh, I've had the old beastie COVID and a few, a few little, oh, no you know. Way. Yeah, it's been, it's been shocking. Have you avoided it? It's so far. I know, it's weird. It's weird. We've just come back from the far north where we've been shooting a TV series and, you know, a, a number of us got nailed by COVID and I don't know how I've managed to avoid it yet. I mean, you know, I'm going to get it, obviously, because those of us who go, oh, maybe I'm going to get to an elderly age and be able to say to my grandchildren I avoided that that's when you get nailed by it so yeah, I you think, know I think oh, wait, so. were you okay though was it was it brutal for yeah, you yeah it was brutal was it? it still is oh man <laughs> yeah. and it's like oh, 20 so 22 days in so no not not the coolest but you know I heard hey have you just come from a gym session did you say Actually, yes I've been I've, I've, I've joined a small gym that I can walk to and I'm having PT sessions which is not like me at all. It's not like me at all. But um, I wondered that. I'm doing it. Yeah, no, it's so not like me. But I just decided that, um, in fact, I, I think I did, I thought about it when I turned 50 and then I turned 57 this year and I was still thinking about it and I thought, you know, there's that thing now that as you get older, particularly postmenopausally, that if you don't use it, you lose it. And, and you know, I just need to build up some muscle. <laughs> <And> I, <laughs> yeah. so I, I I'm, going to this, I'm I, going to this lovely trainer called Ricky and he's busting my ass totally and it's really, really, really uncomfortable but kind of fun. So when you come out, do you feel good? Yeah, I do. Sore and good. Yes. Sore and good. But, and, but actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, I feel virtuous. All the good things. It's incredible because, yeah. I mean, you really are just so busy, aren't you? And... Uh, did you hear my intro that you, I, I was um, Googling you and um, you've been claimed as a, a as a loved American actress and I was like, how dare they? But, um, Have I? Yes, yes. Who claimed me as a loved American actress? Oh, oh it was, it was a... Dog. Hello, doggies. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hello, doggies. I'm just going to go to the in the bedroom. It's like whenever the whenever postman comes or anyone walks down our street, they have to yell at them. Yeah, I hear that. Is, is, is that annoying or is no, that No, it's right? fine. It's funny. So, Robin, you, you've been in the far north with Tim Morrison. What's going What's going down? What are you doing? What's keeping you busy? Oh, well, I've been doing a, a television series um, direct, written and directed by David White, um, who I did a film called This Town With. But this is a very different... Um, this is a very different show. It's a six-part drama for television, and it's about um, the sort of the biggest mech, the biggest mech load that landed on Ninety Mile Beach in 2016, and about what really happened. Because it, it was quite uh, chaotic, wasn't it? Uh, these these chaps yeah. who tried to pull off this um, this haul. Yeah, it's an amazing story. It's an amazing story, and Tim and I play the the couple and that is sort of centred around up in Ahipara and it was really amazing. It was so wonderful to be up there for seven weeks and be in that world and um, and meet the meet the real guys who are just the sweetest people you could ever meet and um, and tell that story. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say yet because they're still shooting it and I think there was a bit of an embargo so I might have to sort of leave it there except to say working with Tim was so fun. It was so lovely. We don't work together since... Shortland Street, yes. and um, so it was. Yeah, it was just blast. It was so great. And, what a, what a dream why, team! Oh my god, and and also what a place, you know. You wake up in the morning, and wild horses are just wandering along the beach in front of your window, and 
um, you know, that wide open horizon that goes all the way up that beach and the the sea, uh, you know, just just divine place to live. Very, very, very special, really special. So I was bloody lucky. Sometimes I kind of do feel that my job is the best job in the world. Definitely on jobs like that, yeah. Mm. Excuse me, I'm losing my voice, so I'm I'm gonna. I'm going to try not to cough too much. And <laughs> you, you go for it. You go for it. I, I hope, mm. hope that's not the start of something <laughs> serious. But No, it's a, well, I'm, I'm testing. I'm shoving those bloody things Rats. up my, my <laughs> nose twice a day at the moment, and that's all fine so far. So, so far, so good. It's, it's tough times being an actor at the moment, isn't it, with um, navigating COVID? Yeah. Yeah, it has been. It's... Um, it's getting better now, and I managed. I managed to travel to America to do, um, you know, to do Blackbird um, at the beginning of last year. I think it was the beginning of last year, mm. and that was during COVID. And um, in fact, I got my first vaccination over there. Um, but Australia, because of the um, the MIQ rules in Australia and New Zealand. Most of my work for the last 10 years has been happening in Australia and I just couldn't go there because it was taking a month out of my life on either end. Yeah. So it was either it was either stay here and kind of, you know, find ways to stay alive or um, or travel further afield. So I did, I did a little bit of both. Yeah, I see. And so I did a lot of gardening, a <laughs> lot of gardening. <laughs> did you? It doesn't, it doesn't seem to fit with your image, Robin. Do you not think... Oh, well, yes and oh, no, no a, but yeah, yeah. No, I'm a I'm a crazy I'm a crazy dog garden gumboot lady. Actually, um, in fact, I'm becoming even more that sort of image. Is, is like I painted my house bright pink, and I <laughs> own two massive dogs, and I spend most of my time in gumboots with a really mental sun hat out with flowers on it at the back. You know. No, I, I, that, I can I see that. that. I am that person. I am actually that person. <laughs> I, I can I can see that side of you. I, I think, and I think you've always been upfront about that. Like I was l- looking at a an interview you did. Um, when was this? Oh, 2018 actually. But you said you talked to uh, the interview and you said I thought I was too fat, too big, too OTT, too noisy, unkempt, and uncouth. Did you really think yeah. that? Yeah. 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 I think I still am, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, always. I mean, you know, it, um, that's how I believed myself to be when I was um, a, a younger person. I think, you know, what, you know, one of our life jobs or our life's work is to kind of grow into all the stuff that we thought might be particularly good about us when we were younger. You know, like you start yeah. to, it's a kind of a falling in love with yourself as the years go by and hopefully most of the time you get there before you, you know, um, shuffle off. And I think probably back in the day, this has got very, very heavy all of a sudden. I think back in the day, <laughs> as with so many of us, you know, there's a lot when you're a teenager you don't like it about yourself. That's true. Oh, you think it's too much or you think it's too noisy or you think it's too this, too that. So... Thank God for the life of the theatre, really, because I've met a whole bunch of people who were exactly the same. And um, I, f- I found my tribe, which was so amazingly um, such Liberating. a joyful surprise. Mm. Yeah, yeah, mm. absolutely. And also, absolutely. You're, so, you're so real, and that's probably why uh, your career's been such a success in a way, because you, you, you do seem very grounded and very approachable. And let's face it, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of lovies in the world of acting, isn't there? Yeah, there's a few. I mean, no, I can, I can be, I can be a lovely with the best of them. Don't get me wrong, but I think also, I don't know. Maybe it's the small town thing. Maybe it's um, also I've got a pretty grounded family who um, have never really taken what I do particularly seriously, and they're um, in a kind of a great way. Yeah, and right. You know, and so they've kept me, you know, they've kept me pretty grounded. And um, I also think, I don't know, uh, we're all the same, aren't we? There's all that, there's all that shit that goes around people who are in Hollywood and famous people, and all oh, we got to treat them differently, and we mm. just really, really, really shouldn't. Yeah, because they're no more or less important than any of us, you know. Yeah, did and um. 
And I've always and I've always really believed that. And so the few times that I've been over there in Hollywood, I've really scratched my head at how. I mean, it's all about money, isn't it? About how some of these actors are treated like they're gods. And it's really not that they're gods. It's just that they're worth a lot of money because their movies sell a lot. And that's right. You know, but they're not actually gods. They're just they're just normal people who've done very well in their careers. Exactly. And, um, exactly. You know. Yeah, and, 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 we're very, and you're right. We're much more like that here, you know. And I've always loved that. And that was what was so lovely about hanging out with Kim again is that he's become huge now because of Boba Fett. But he's still, you know, the most gorgeous humble, low-key, chilled-out person. And charismatic as hell, isn't he, as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. Even on a woolly hat driving a tractor, absolutely. I can imagine, I can imagine that. So getting back to, okay, let's go way back then to to Ashburton days. So did you feel like a, 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 you know, a square peg in a round hole growing up there? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Uh, Absolutely, I did. I mean, I I just, um, we spent the first, eight, nine years in Motueka before that, and that was much more sort of lefty, hippie kind of place. And then we went to Ashburton, which wasn't quite so much. But And so I did feel, uh, oh, absolutely like a fish out of water there. And, you know, when you're a kid, you're sort of like, it's, there's something wrong with you, not the rest of the world. Yes. And um, But I had, you know, kids always have a couple of saviors. And um, my English teacher for a couple of years was a woman called Lynn McDonald, and she just she was my saviour, really. And there were a couple of other, you know, sort of Englishy dramery folk there who who kind of got me and those like me, and that was that was life saving stuff, really. Mm. And then and then when I finally left Ashburton and, and went to uni at Canterbury and started meeting those people. You know the people that dressed funny and you know, yeah. <laughs> and were and, and and were a bit more in my world. Suddenly you start feeling normal. It's really you know, and and that made a massive difference. Yeah, you know, I, I bet that so many people relate to that story. That small town New Zealand where. Yeah, you and and your confidence. You're right. When you when you're growing up, you're trying to find who you are, what you are, what you're about. Most people, unless they're very very good at faking it, aren't particularly confident going through secondary school. I don't think. No, I don't think so either. I think. I, I mean, I I see, I see the generation now. Like my my boys are eighteen and sixteen, and they both went through Western Springs College, or one of them still there, and the level of um, the sort of open-minded tolerance, acceptance, kindness that those kids have to each other is really quite extraordinary. I mean, that's why I think it's the best school in the world. But um, I look at how they're growing up and how the kind of judgment either placed on us by other people or by our own selves doesn't seem to exist for them in the same way. And which is amazing, it's mm. amazing, and um, and makes for a much happier teenhood. Because I mean, you know, it's a pretty traumatic time at, at the best of times, isn't it? And yeah, it uh, is. which is kind of great. And and you're you're right. Most people have got got a lot of, you know, most of us have got insecurities and issues. worries and yeah. issues that we that we're all trying to work through, and. Um, the kind of we are, the better I think. And I, I think kids now they just maybe it's because they've got parents like like us now who <laughs> all know, who all talk about it. Yeah, they're sort of I don't know. They're they're protected more. I don't know. I don't know. We've just been. I've just finished doing a documentary about um, anxiety. Ah, uh, very interesting. Which is in New Zealand. Which is uh, I'm not sure when it's airing. It's in. Um, TV and Z, and we've talked to lots and lots of people about this, and it's just amazing how when you scratch the surface of most people, um, there's just so much bubbling under the surface, so many worries, so many concerns, so many stuff, so much stuff from childhood, so yeah. much stuff from you know sort of adult life that people are dealing with, and we all do it very quietly in our own little world, you know. And uh, and I found I found doing that doc very revealing and kind of wonderful, really. I would really like to see that. Can you tell us uh, when it's screening and what it's called? 
Um, it's called Me, You and or You, Me and Anxiety and it's screening on TV and Z and we've just locked the whole thing off. I don't think it has a date yet, but it it will be prime time on TV and Z at some point, probably quite soon, I think. Nice. You know, it's so strange you should mention that because, you know, you, you have um, got a big social conscience. You care about uh, humanity and I think you care about this country. And just lately, I'm hearing a lot of people saying that we are swamped with anxiety. We're not in a good way. Do you think that is the case? Mm. Do you think this winter's been the worst that you can remember for that? Well, I... I there's an edge in the world at the moment, I think, because of so many things. And I don't know. I mean, you're talking to someone that went up to Ahipara and buried her head in a really cool job for the last um, seven, seven weeks of winter. So I was having a great time. So I don't Bro. know about the rest of it. <laughs> but the perception I get from just reading the news, reading the world news, and talking to people is that. But for the first time in my life this year, I decided to have my own personal embargo against the news. Like, I just stopped because I found it all so, so depressing and so worrying, uh -huh. you know, with what's going on in Eastern Europe, um, you know, climate change, the, the fact that Trump is rearing his foul head again. You know, like, if everything just seems worrying at the moment. And I decided that for me to have a happy life... Uh, for a while, I was going to become a, an ostrich. Mm. It didn't, it didn't last for long. But it does feel that way. Yeah. It does feel like it, it, there's, there's a lot to bloody worry about. And <laughs> there's, there's a sense of powerlessness with a, with a fair amount of it at the moment. And I don't know what the answer is. I, I suspect the answer is you do what you can in your own life. And you vote the right way, and you cross your fingers and you hope for the best. Mm. And then you go, you, you go and stand by the sea as much as possible, and you get out into nature as much as possible, and you you try and find a balance that way. Yeah, find your own. Um, and, you know, and, and this is yeah, find your own peace. And this is partly why we made Doco too, was that we'd been, you know, just hearing over the last couple of years, particularly with COVID, just yeah. how anxious people were coming for very, very, very good reasons. You know, people's livelihoods being seriously threatened um, because of um, losing jobs or just, you know, whatever they do, losing income, losing clients, whatever, mm. a alongside everything else. And so we thought it was probably a good idea to, um, you know, join the conversation, I guess. And what's fascinating is that every time I, you know, every time I mention this thing, in any group of people, at least one person will go, oh, I, I, I struggle with anxiety. It's, it's, yeah. so, it's so common, mm. so common. That, did that surprise you, just the, the, the breadth of it? In doing the stock, so, I mean. Um, when you think about it, probably not. You know, like, if you do think about it, 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 it stands to reason that we're... We're a very anxious species right now, but um, it, it was also still, I, I guess I could say I was also still quite surprised because of how readily people will admit, which is kind of an amazing thing, because back in the day, the whole New Zealand psyche was just a sandwich and get on with it. Mm. And, and now we're much more inclined to talk, which is, which is brilliant which is brilliant. Like, we, we really, um, we're starting to care about each other's feelings a lot more. Yeah, and it's um, a good, it's a good thing. What, do your sons yeah. talk, talk to you about this? I mean, because you're, you're a proud mum, and I mean, they're not that old, what, 16 and 18? So, um, yeah. you know, they're quite vulnerable ages, aren't they? Do you catch up with them, you know, as much as you can, and, and do you get deep, or do yeah. you just have a good laugh together? We have a good laugh together, but um, I mean, I'll check in every now and then if, 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 you know, if we haven't checked in for a while. And of course, they're they're teenagers, so they don't, 
they need a bit of a push sometimes to say stuff. But uh, what I also found, and, and this was one of the great discoveries of COVID and the lockdown, like I blew my back at the beginning of one of the lockdowns last year and really couldn't get off the couch for a few weeks. And I ended up just kind of sitting on the couch, chewing the fat with my boys in a way that I would never normally do in proper life because, you know, you're out and about and you're hanging around trying to get from one place to another and you, you're running your life and the kids are running, you know, doing all their, all, all their stuff as well and actually just not sitting down for a chat but just sitting down together mucking about and letting conversations happen almost incidentally, I found so brilliant. I, I, you know, like, it's almost like you discover more when you just do that. And it really, it taught me a pretty awful lesson, really, that I hadn't done enough of that. That, you know, I'd be like, busy here, busy here, busy here. Now, let's sit down and have a quick chat. Is everything good? Good, right, let's go again. You know, <laughs> as opposed to just chilling and stopping and just, Killing time together. Yeah, maybe not even talking that much. Maybe just just being with each other and uh, yeah. enjoying the company. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, what's quite good is that my house is really quite small, um, and so we do fall over each other a lot, which I also think is quite good. So I'm always, you know, I'm never far away, so I can always check in and and I know what's happening, you know, mm. and and that and that's good. That's good. But the, the, I, I found, aside from the, you know, the, the, the economic worries of the lockdown, like so many people putting that aside, I found the time really amazing. So great. Just to just stop. Right. Gotcha. You know, all it, that. Enforced all that. Um, slowing down. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I've, so many people I've spoken to now have said how great that was. Of course, it means that you're not earning any money, which then becomes majorly problematic. But, but for a time there, it was really special, I thought. <laughs> yeah. 20, 2020 has, um, you know, I remember the last two winters quite fondly. It was great. Never got sick and... Uh, sun seemed to shine a bit more and it just seemed more mellow and um yeah sort of getting back into it was almost like quite hard to reset i think in a way yeah let, let's talk about yeah. let, let's talk about a bit more about you know your amazing work and like um i mean i <laughs> we always have fun with you with the bogan westy kind of thing when 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 we mention your name and and does that yeah. does that um do you, do you tire of that are you or are you just super proud of cheryl west and the upper middle bogan work etc Super proud of it. No, I don't tire of it at all. No, I mean I make jokes about it sometimes, but but no, absolutely not because it's work that I had a ball doing. Um, albeit particularly with outrageous, sometimes it was massively cha- it was challenging too. But that's a good thing. Um, it uh, it's good work, so it's work that I'm proud of as well. And also, um, it's my job it's how i pay my mortgage you know you know and it and it helped my career a lot like i was able to use outrageous fortune um you know obviously as a stepping stone to getting further jobs mm. and so um you know hashtag grateful blah 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 i mean i really am <laughs> right and and, and, it's, and it's audiences that do that i mean i i, was, I found through I found through the, the lockdown so many people coming up and going, oh my God, I've just rewatched the entire of Outrageous Fortune again. I'd forgotten how much I loved it. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah, that's that brilliant, it's, isn't it? It, it? Yes, that it's not dated, that people still get great fun out of it. My my boys won't watch it. I, I offered I Why? Said to them once, maybe you should. Oh, I just said you'd really love it. But of course, the first scene of the first episode, I'm. Um, having sex, <laughs> yeah, of course. and they just went no, <laughs> no, 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 no. The television went off, and it went off, and it's never gone back on again because they just don't want to risk. <laughs> no, fair enough. Too raunchy. You don't. Your m- no, mother. No, but also, it's, oh. it's your mum. Yeah, mums don't it's have like sex. Mom. You know that, Robin. Of course they don't. 
No. Of course they don't. I mean, gross. So, no, they've been put off it for life. I oh, think. that's so funny. Of course they, yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. I mean, and, you know, I mean, you've been, you've been hailed New Zealand's sexiest woman. You've won that, like, four years in a row. That's cool. And... You know, they should be proud of that, but no, I get it. Uh, that's that's slightly uncomfortable. And when they're older, I, maybe. When they're older. I mean, I did think, I said that to them once. I told them that with my hands on my hips. I was like, just in case you think I'm irrelevant and just in case you think that I'm your grumpy old mum, guess what? And I just got loads of eye rolls. Loads of eye rolls. That's perfect teenage behaviour. Yeah, lots behavior. of eye rolls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 How yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think either of those two boys w- would uh, follow in your footsteps in some way? Well, they both seem to have an interest in it. They both have fun doing it. They, um, I think... I was quite mean early on because I was really, really determined not to be a stage mum and and also for a while there I was like, oh God, do I really want to encourage them into this world because it's really tough. So one of them did say to me once, do you think I'm talented mum? And I went, no, you're not, not at all, no, no. And then he just looked at me and he went, you're an asshole. And I went, yeah, of course I'm like, yes, of course you're talented. Are you kidding me? Um, But I think they have... They've seen what it's like. They know what it's like. And they, so they don't have stars in their eyes at all. I, I think if either of them decide that they want to take it more seriously, they'll do it on their own terms and they'll do it because they enjoy it. Mm. Because they've also, you know, I've got a big collection of mates who are actors and some are very well off and some, you know, just live in a permanent state of penury. And they're amazing actors, so they know they know what can happen, mm. and and they also know that it's the only thing that gets you through all that is to genuinely love, love, love being an actor. Yeah, and so they'll they'll work that out themselves or not. That, that's or right. They might. Mm. And all, yeah, all you want, yeah. isn't it, for your children is to do what you love and. You know, yeah. and and like you say, I mean, yeah. that's the f- fulfilling thing about about your existence is yes, the world can be messed up, but then you got your head in a job, and it's like you're immersed and you, and you're doing what you should be mm. doing. It's something that you were clearly born to do. And the cool thing about about it is the offers aren't stopping, are they, Robin? Like, I mean, actually, we've got to go to news in a minute, but no. I'm, but I'm just saying, you know, the thing for you, are you um, uh, quite surprised in a way that there doesn't seem to be any of that ageism? Uh, affecting you at this stage of your career, you know, with the Apple TV series and all sorts of other, you know, offers? Well, there is a bit, like, in the sense that I've had a few scenarios where I've auditioned for a character in her 50s and they've ended up casting an actress in her 30s. That's happened twice now. Ah. And you do look at it and go, ooh, ooh, that's interesting, isn't it? It's like, you say you want that, but you kind of really don't. (laughs) Um, But having said that, I'm also... Every year I think, oh, God, is this it? Is this the year? It's going to get just impossible. And something always turns up. So, so far, so good, Leanne. What's that? Sorry? I said so far, so good. So far, so good. Yeah, and uh, long may it continue. Robin, we'll go to news now. Have have a beautiful afternoon uh, with your dogs. And uh, thanks so much for for the chat. See you, sis. Lovely to talk to you. (laughs) Lovely to catch up. Bye, sis. Ciao. Bye, Bye, sis.